Aloha. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night, and all those other goods. Good, good macht. Many different languages, many of which I don't know. Uh, thank you for coming to today's live stream. I am running about one hour late. I've been on an important phone call with my uh, spiritual teacher, Master Shah. <clears throat> and um, I don't know who or how many of you will join, but today we're going to be talking about spiritual testing, what it is and how to pass it. So I hope that that will serve you, and I hope that uh, you are able to stick around and enjoy this uh, information that I'll be sharing with you today. So my name is Paul Fletcher. I am a certified master teacher, certified by the Tao Academy. <clears throat> and um, for those that are just scrolling through and just across this, this is the third year I've been doing this live stream. Uh, Kristen Rojas has been helping me uh, the entire time, posting and, uh, and then sharing my videos across the web. So I'm very grateful for her service. And so uh, during these live streams, we talk about uh, many different things, many different aspects related to the spiritual growth of the, of the soul and how we can clear our blockages to be happier and healthier, how we can clear the negative information and have more positive information in our life. And so a big aspect of that is that we are tested spiritually, especially if we want to grow, especially if we wish to find out, you know, why am I here? What is life all about? And how do I make my life less miserable and more fun? Well, uh, this information might have some value to you. <clears throat> so let's check in, see who joined today. Uh, welcome, Shelly. Aloha, Ambika. And welcome also, Samba. Thank you for your presence. Welcome, Christy. And aloha, Diana Vittoria. Aloha, Alexandre. And Dan, aloha. Welcome, Larissa. Welcome, Rosetta. Uh, aloha also to Nina. And thank you, Kristen, for showing up and serving. She's been waiting an hour. Thank you. <clears throat> Imagine a lot of you have actually. Welcome, Jody. Welcome also, Lorraine. Uh, aloha, Larissa Wood. And I think I've got everybody. Welcome, uh, Shaden. I think I said that right. And welcome, Amber. So um, <clears throat> let me clear my voice here a second. So today could be very valuable information. You know, um, I'll go into it more in a minute. But uh, we, it's important to set the field. Uh, a lot of times when I, when I offer this wisdom and teachings, some of it's from my own personal experience. But a good chunk of it is through divine flow, through information that comes to me in the moment. <clears throat> a, lot of it, a lot of it will come through um, the wisdom and teachings of Dr. and Master Shah. For those that are unfamiliar with Master Shah, I highly recommend you learn a little bit more. He's got over 20 books, many New York Times bestsellers, and uh, many different students from around the world. He's literally known in just about every country in the world. So you could learn a little bit more at uh, picking up a book by Dr. and Master Shah. Anyway, <clears throat> welcome also to Gina Dupre uh, and Erica. Aloha. Welcome, Greg Fischel. So let us connect first. We invite in all the beings of light to join with us so that we can get the most out of this time together. Okay? So placing our hands either in a prayer position or dropping left hand in front of the heart center. This is a form of connection to heaven. We invite in all of the beings of light, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source creator. We invite in all of the heaven's animals, the angels, healing angels, and archangels, masters and ascended masters, all the gurus, lamas, sifus, and saints. We love you. We honor you. Respect you. I bow my head to each of you with the deepest gratitude for your presence. <clears throat> and I ask you to be present today to assist in this wisdom, teachings, and blessings for passing spiritual testing, understanding what is spiritual testing and how to pass it. We thank you in advance for all that you share with us, past, present, and future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, uh, again, for those that are new, there is a mantra called Love, Peace, and Harmony. Uh, it is sung around the world in over seven continents, and it is sung around the world daily by literally hundreds, thousands, and possibly now millions of people. And we sing this song one round to set the energy field. So let us do so. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. 
ulalu la lilu la lu la lilu la lu la lilu la wo ai wo xian er ling wo ai zlan an li ang ling ru er mu shi shang shang ai ping on her shit song i ping on her shit i love my heart and soul i love all humanity join hearts and souls together love peace and harmony love peace in harmony see now don't you feel better so if you didn't know that song now you do you can download it at lovepeaceharmony.org Kristen has already posted links <clears throat> and she's actually posted a link to who is master Shah who's very talented Kristen she just posts all kinds of cool stuff welcome CJ welcome Erica Aloha Bapcha Aloha Pat Bapcha says why do we need to pass any test isn't love, peace, and harmony about acceptance? Then just enter into a club where one is accepted. Ah, I would love if life was like that. But I may share some things today that shed a little bit of a different perspective on things. First thing I want to state is no matter what anybody says, whether it's Master Shah or the Bible or me or the Quran or... Uh, the Dalai Lama or Oprah it doesn't really matter whatever anybody says it doesn't mean it's your truth it means it's a piece of information that could assist you on your soul journey and the way to tell if it's a value to you is does it resonate in your heart does it bring value to you do you feel like you've benefited from that slice of wisdom if so then it's probably a good information for you and will serve you well but if, if something about it just doesn't feel right, then just throw it away. There's no need. Okay, so there's no one person that should be the source of all information. <clears throat> For some reason, have the need to share that. Okay, welcome Delma. Welcome Candy Cornette. Welcome Gregory Hanover. And thank you all for joining. I know I'm late. Thank you for your presence. So today we're going to be focusing on spiritual testing. What is it and how do you pass it? Well, what is spiritual testing? Uh, depends on a deeper understanding of what is the root um, of this life and for some of you this will be a recap of what you already know for some of you it might be a little new information uh, Master Shah taught today uh, a phrase he said the soul is and I, I got to grab the right words he said <clears throat> he said the soul is um, uh, I can't grab that word. I'm going to have to paraphrase it. Is the carrier of all information for us on an individual basis. Now, some people believe in more than one life. Some people don't. Whatever your belief, hold on to it. Um, but I personally believe in more than one life. And so in those multiple lifetimes, there is uh, many, many different experiences. And the soul is the carrier of all those experiences. Some of the experiences uh, create positive information that reside with our soul some of the lifetimes create negative information that reside with our soul and accordingly <clears throat> um, those pieces of information uh, create an environment that we walk through in this thing called life and so prior to our entrance into this third dimensional experience we uh, have uh, a soul souls always in existence we me Paul you Joe Mary Beth whatever your names are uh, we are not uh, our soul our soul is not us we are a personality named Paul Beth Mary whatever we are a personality that lives and dies in roughly a hundred years and starts over again whereas our soul is the repository the carrier of all of those experiences in all time and those experience uh, in most cases are going to be very positive but there will be in some cases not so positive <clears throat> this positive messages or positive information and the negative messages or negative information 
reside with our soul. And they project like a projection screen. You ever been to a movie theater and you look at behind you and, in the, and above you in the center is this little light about this big and it projects this massive screen in front of you. Well, think of your life kind of like that. Your soul is the projector sitting behind the wall. You can't see your soul, but it's there. And it has all the information and it projects uh, into your life aspects of the positive and aspects of the negative information that has been gathered in all your life experiences. Aloha Joy, a welcome Susan, welcome also Mark Wright, and welcome also Antoinette. <clears throat> and so it does not project everything. It only projects into our physical life. So imagine if you will, okay, you're a child born and uh, your soul projects onto your physicalness aspects of the positive and negative messages of all time okay what aspects does it project certainly not everything we would be a mess but it projects into your physical uh, growth uh, those things that are going to be best for you to reach enlightenment those things that are going to be best for you to align your heart and soul to your original source creator in the best highest and fastest way possible uh, generally speaking virtually every belief system on the planet has an agreement that we're all on a pathway back to oneness okay so I doubt there will be any argument with that and so what then is spiritual testing it is get it now here's here's the important point spiritual testing is your and my lack of of ability in most cases it's a lack of ability lack of awareness to recognize what is happening in the moment a test often is referred to as something that's a negative experience a test is referred to as something that that we have to pass right it's mostly about becoming aware of why this experience has showed up in my life because the person that passes the test starts with that question the reason whatever that experience is that in most cases doesn't feel comfortable it could be you had a car accident it could be you had a money issue it could be you had a relationship issue all of these had to have a precursor they have a predecessor these experiences just don't show up in our life accidentally there's no such thing as an accidental life everything has a meaning and a purpose and it all ties back to <clears throat> our soul and our soul carrying being the repository of all of our life experiences and so in this physical life when we are born and we start to move through this life the parents that we have are part of our soul level agreements uh, we may have had uh, we may have a wonderful mother and a not so pleasant father we may have a wonderful father and a not so pleasant mother we may have great parents but a really unpleasant brother and sister uh, these different people enter our lives not accidentally they're on purpose same thing for our personal relationships our husbands our wives our ex-lovers our lovers or whatever you want to call them <clears throat> they are not accidental as they enter our lives and this is all part of the plan of your soul and it's intermingled with their souls but st sticking with your soul for now so certain aspects of your um, positive and negative information that is is deposited at your soul level is projected into your personal world this creates the conditions that you step into moving forward so at the age of four you might um, uh, have a teacher enter your life a, a, a pre preschool teacher and they teach you a certain set of information that changes your life forever in a, maybe a very positive way okay that was not accidental uh, you may be age seven and one of the kids at school is a bully and they, they beat you up <clears throat> these kinds of things are not accidental why did that child show up in your world there is a slice of negative information that projected into your physical world a condition that was designed to bring about a spiritual test so a seven-year-old child can have a spiritual test well in this example the answer is yes Will they be aware enough? Probably not. If they had exceptional parenting, then they would definitely be aware enough. If their parenting was such that 
uh, their parents taught that there are no accidents in life, that everything has a reason. So if some child punches you, then instead of being upset and punching the child back, go inside your heart and do forgiveness and ask uh, heaven, what did I do that may have brought this condition to me? And that seven-year-old child, if he had that kind of wisdom taught to him at a young age, well, then you would have probably a child that goes to be a Buddha by his old age uh, or a Christ-like figure, however you want to state the result. Uh, the point is, <clears throat> as we move through life, there is absolutely nothing that is accidental. Nothing. So every part of your life, when you look back on it, all the great stuff and all of the sucky stuff and all the good memories and all of the not-so-good memories, right? Everything had a purpose and reason. If you look at the not-so-good memories, you will discover that there was the, the biggest wisdom come out of those not-so-pleasant experiences. The biggest aha moments, the biggest gains very often come from the unpleasant experiences. This is an example of uh, the possibility of passing a spiritual test. I say it's a possibility because if you come out of it and you refuse to make those mistakes again, uh, and you are wiser and better for it, and most importantly, you forgive those souls that supposedly did that to you, if you come out of it, guess what? You passed your spiritual test. Congratulations. One piece of the entirety of all of your uh, life experiences that carried prior to you passing this test, they carried negative messages. Well, you passed the test. Those negative messages are, re are removed. They're no longer in your aura. They're no longer in your soul experience. And that means that your pro projection into your future could be much, much better. Let's use a real life example. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you have financial problems, right? Raise your hand if you can't seem to keep a job or get a job or, or no matter what happens, people hate you at your job, blah, 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 right? We all have these sob stories. Uh, I've been there, I've done that. I've been blessed and more recently my finances have been better. But trust me, I went through about 20 years of those sob stories. <clears throat> this was my financial testing, and it's probably yours as well. Give me a moment while I clear my throat. Okay. And so these are spiritual tests when we're in the middle of these, quote, financial issues or relationship issues. We're going to use financial issues as an example of spiritual testing. So what causes these financial problems to go away? What caused them to be projected into our life in the first place? Well, hmm, let's think about this. We have positive messages. We have negative messages. In Tao science, they would say we have positive information. We have negative information. And they reside with us, projected into this life. So if you have financial problems in this life, guess what? It's part of the negative information that you earned because you brought negative information, financial negative information into other people's lives. What's another way of saying that? You could have stolen from others. You could have caused others to lose jobs. You could have done things that harmed others financially. Therefore, that negative information projects into your life in little pieces here or there. Now that applies to relationships. It applies to individual relationships. It can apply to finances. It can apply to uh, every area of your life. The same information uh, applies. <clears throat> so a spiritual test then is the conscious recognition of that moment when you're not feeling so wonderful, when you're feeling defensive, when you're feeling argumentative, when you're feeling angry, when you're feeling upset, when you want to yell at the boss or the coworker, when you come home uh, and there's, there's holes in your roof from you hitting the roof from the irritation of losing the job or the inability to get a job or whatever the financial condition may be, instead of being ignorant of the source of these things, you pay attention to this kind of information, this kind of uh, spiritual wisdom, and you say, hmm, Maybe there is a reason why this has entered my life. Maybe I, in a time I do not remember, caused the same kind of financial suffering I'm currently going through upon others. This is the awakening to the spiritual test. What then is the answer? 
The answer, of course, is to release the source, the root of that specific uh, unpleasant negative message that's entered your life. So if it's a financial blockage, <clears throat> then you look directly at it. Is it that you can't get a raise in your job no matter what you do and nobody promotes you? Well, guess what? That means that you have not promoted others and you have not given other raises when you were in the boss position. Very simple, okay? If it's that you can't get a job no matter what, well, then that means it's very likely you kept others from getting a job uh, or that you uh, created very significant financial suffering for others. You don't even have to know what it was. You could have uh, made some very unpleasant choices um, and created significant financial suffering for others. The solution, as taught by all the spiritual gurus in all the belief systems worldwide, is forgiveness. And that's what Master Shah teaches as well. <clears throat> the difference is we do authentic forgivenesses. Authentic meaning deep, meaning a recognition at a very deep, heartfelt level that the suffering you're in the, mo in the middle of right now was earned. And that it sucks and that it sucks so much you're ready to make a change you're ready to take responsibility you're ready to do a deep and authentic forgiveness one hour two hours crying on a floor kind of authentic forgiveness to all of the souls in all time where you have made choices and they financial uh, suffered financially they couldn't afford food they couldn't feed their children maybe they couldn't get a job maybe they had to move from their nice house to a hut maybe they uh, uh, you know you don't know what happened to those other souls you just need to know that there's a root cause for the test that's in front of you and when you do a deep and authentic forgiveness <clears throat> that is when those um, negative messages that negative information starts to lift it starts to uh, come up off the paper so to speak you ever see the movies where the the dark stuff floats up off the paper and floats away okay kind of like that when you do a deep and authentic forgiveness the negative messages that have been pervading your life causing negative uh, in this example financial problems again and again and again those dissipate you do multiple deep forgiveness practices for that instance, and you pass the spiritual test. <clears throat> spiritual tests can come in many different forms, not just in money. Spiritual tests, still have a frog in my throat. Spiritual tests can come in the form of um, automatic reactions right automatic reactions the kind where we just get really angry really fast for something that really that's a way overblown reaction right that's a spiritual test as well um, sometimes one of the children you seem to get along really good with the other one they're always pushing your buttons no matter what right that is also a spiritual test but we have to look at it not as that cute little verbiage Spirit, oh, this is a spiritual test. No, we have to look at it as this is negative information between that person and me. This is not the first time around. This keeps showing up every day. This, this beautiful little child of mine keeps pushing my button every day makes me have more and more irritation. Okay, you can ignore it and yell at that child, but do you think that's adding more negative information to both of your soul journeys? Do you think that's helping? Uh, obviously not <clears throat> so what do we need to do we need to become more conscientious of what is the root of this uh, spiritual test that keeps showing up in my life again and again and again just look at your life how many things keep coming back at you there are people that have had seven eight nine car accidents do you think that there's a root cause to that do you think any of that was accidental of course not and it's the same thing when you have that one person that keeps pushing your buttons no matter what. You must take a look at that root and say, hmm, this is a negative message held within my soul, held potentially within another person's soul, and it's showing itself again and again so that it can be released. How do you release it? 
you release it with positive information. Doing a forgiveness practice is positive information. Adding love to the relationship is positive information. Doing a soul communication with that person's soul and asking forgiveness, not with the person directly. Maybe they're not open to it. If they are, great, do it to, in person. But if they're not, then just do it at the level of soul. You invite their soul and you do a forgiveness practice directly with their soul. You tell them, I recognize that we're always fighting with each other. I recognize that I must have, have been very um, <clears throat> uh, pushing your button at some other point in time, always getting on your case, always putting you down, whatever it is that's happening with you. Uh, if it's a love relationship, okay, uh, all of us have love relationship issues, right? They're either past, present, or we worry about having the same ones in the future. So we don't even have a relationship now because we don't want to make the same mistakes we've had in the past and we don't want to get our heart broken again, right? So there are so many different ways in which um, uh, we do not allow ourselves to open our heart, open ourselves to heal because we we wallow in fear, we wallow in pain from a past or current relationship, <clears throat> or we won't allow ourselves to have a future relationship because we wallow in fear or in pain and we refuse to open our hearts again. Okay, this is a, a lack of awakening. This is a lack of spiritual awareness because there's a reason those, uh, those souls that you fell in love with them at some point in time, right? It, it was lovey-dovey and it was wonderful for one year, two year, five year, 10 year, and then it just went south for the winter. Why? Um, you can go through and name because she did that or he did that because blah, 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 blah. You can go and name the, the physical world wise, but the spiritual person will look at it very, very differently. They won't look at the physical world wise with the exception of that's where they do the forgiveness practice. If they cheated on you or, or whatever it was, that's where you do your forgiveness practice. You only use that as a starting point. But the spiritual person looks at it as there's a negative information between us. It was there even when we first fell in love. It may have grown because of miscommunication. It may have been there prior to the miscommunication. It may have been what's caused the miscommunication. <clears throat> but there's a reason you two came together. It doesn't matter if that relationship is with your mother or father or with uh, an ex-spouse or with a current spouse. There's a reason you all came together. And if you have disagreements in that communication, if you have negative information going back and forth between you, back and forth between you, self-righteousness, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, and I stand up for it, okay? You can be right all you want, but that negative information is going to stay on your Akashic record. It's going to stay in the repository of your soul. It will be with you until it's not. And the only way to remove it is through conscious application of the wisdom the master shop brings <clears throat> so um, the source field the Tao source healing field is one way in which that can be accomplished the song of love peace and harmony the uh, application of a deep honest uh, forgiveness practice these are just some of the things the uh, Tao calligraphy the transmissions within his books you know rainbow light ball of divine love what do all of those represent? They represent, I'll repeat them again. There is the love, peace, harmony song. There is the Tao source field, Tao Chang. There is the Tao calligraphies that radiate the Tao source field. There is the transmissions and treasures. <clears throat> Turn my throat again. still not clear so these uh, treasures these are these are tools okay what were the uh, earlier tools what were the other tools the Bible calling Jesus calling Buddha you know sitting down in front of the statue of Buddha asking Buddha to come to you calling Jesus asking Jesus to come to you these are all tools you don't need to use the ones that I recommend here what did I share at the beginning when you uh, connect from the heart heaven is immediately with you if you just talk from your heart at the deepest level with a deep and authentic request for forgiveness that will create miracles in and of itself
but the tools are designed to assist you when you ask Jesus to come when you ask Buddha to come when you have the Bible in your hand when you use the calligraphy when you use the Tao source field when you use the transmissions they all serve the same purpose they all carry higher Shen Qi and Jing they all carry higher positive information and positive messages <clears throat> a positive field what is a Tao source field I, I spoke at length about it in my last live stream what is a source field was the title of it and I went into describing the nature of the source field and how it can be brought to humanity and how uh, when it is discovered and how you can uh, access that source field you can actually clear a lot of blockages a lot faster so these kinds of tools, instruments, saints, beings of light, and more are readily available to us. Uh, calling forth them and turning them on, utilizing them, that's a personal thing. That's what you and I have to sit down to do to make a difference. You and I have to actually apply these tools to pass the spiritual test. So basically, there's three aspects to what is a spiritual test and how do you pass it. The first is a recognition that <clears throat> we are a soul having a human experience. And in this human experience, our soul projects into our life aspects of positive information that brings us good things, good health, good relationships, good finances, uh, good everything. There's also from our soul aspects of negative information that projects into our life things that we need to release from our soul so that we can move forward on our journey and move higher into light and alignment with the original source. So both these are projected into our life. When those bring into our world happiness, goodness, happy relationships, oh, we're so happy, we thank God, we thank heaven, uh, we thank everybody, right? We're wonderful, we're happy. But when and if something unpleasant happens, we don't do as much gratitude, do we? We kind of move into the blame game. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their, and we point outside of ourselves. So spiritual testing is stop doing that and do this, right? I, at the level of soul, am carrying some negative information between me and this person or some negative information between me and a lot of people, which is typically the case with things like financial blockages. <clears throat> and I need to address this right now with conscious awareness exactly how it's presenting itself to me I choose to with consciousness utilize this is the part how you pass spiritual testing so part two is awakening to it and seeing it uh, uh, part three is applying the higher frequency higher uh, positive information and messages available to us to release the negative information and negative messages that have brought the spiritual testing into your life. How can we become one with the heart of the divine? How can we become happier and healthier? How can we become any aspect of that if we don't release the, the negative information that enters our life? We have to. If you just cover it up, if you just uh, uh, ignore it, <laughs> do you think it's going to go away? How has that worked for you in the past, right? To ignoring it will not make it go away guys it will continue to return just look backwards and you can see that validation and so we must apply the tools the tools are love number one tool love and forgiveness are two sides of the same coin you cannot do one without the other you can but it will have less effect you do both far greater love and forgiveness are the number one and number two tools not in any particular order <clears throat> sometimes it's hard to love sometimes it's easier to forgive sometimes it's easier to love and hard to forgive do whichever is easier first clear the blockages when you do an authentic forgiveness it can vary right in the example of the financial blockages that were offered earlier as an example I clear my throat again Mm, still not gone so when we work with financial blockages almost always it's our spiritual imbalances our spiritual debt a culmination of 
negative messages and negative information that we incurred we could have in times we don't remember created with many people very unpleasant financial conditions and so when we're dealing with us and many souls then we do an in, we do a deep forgiveness practice with all souls from our heart we need to open our heart with love uh, one of the ways to go to the deepest forgiveness is to switch the roles Okay, just realize how much you're suffering. How every time you pick up a bill or rise in the mail, you go into you know anxiety mode. Uh, how does that feel to be in anxiety mode about when's my next you know where am I going to uh, give food for my children? How am I going to pay this next bill? Does it feel good? It's highly unlikely, right? <clears throat> so how what do I mean by switching roles? Really resonate with just how unpleasant that negative information feels. And then switch the foot and go, if I created, in a time I don't remember, if I created this kind of negative information, negative emotions and unpleasant energies with 10, 100, 1,000 people, then I can certainly understand now why I have this negative information in my life. This is spiritual awakening. This is spiritual awareness. This is spiritual testing in the moment. You acknowledge from that deep place the um, just how much it, it it stinks, and you apply that to imagining, knowing that hundreds, thousands could have been on the receiving end of greediness, on the receiving end of you or your ancestors' <coughs> thoughtlessness, carelessness with with things that affected all those people financially. That's why the suffering is in front of you right now. It's not, nothing is accidental. Nothing, 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 nothing is accidental. Everything has a root cause. So it's a universal law, cause and effect. So you do a deep forgiveness practice from that space. If it's with an individual person, <coughs> same thing. Do an individual practice with that individual person, either in person or at the soul level. It's not about uh, saying it's okay what they did if they were abusive to you and has kept you from opening your heart and having a good relationship if uh, uh, Somebody in your younger years was abusive and it's caused you to have abusive relationships. Okay <clears throat> Do you think that's accidental? No, this is negative information residing at the level of soul and It must be released or it will continue to come up in your world. It will not go away you have to deal with it at these levels. So in that kind of an example, you call that person soul and you say, you know, it was the most painful thing to have this abuse happen to me. It has crushed my life. Uh, it did this and this and this and this to me. And you could easily go into a downward spiral. But if you stay conscious, you say, now, I don't know for sure, but I recognize that I no longer want this in my life. I recognize this pattern, and I definitely don't want to be this way towards others in the future. And I want to recognize that there is a 50% possibility that, uh, even if I don't remember, there's a 50% possibility that in a previous time I may have been the unpleasant one in this relationship because I don't believe this is the only time we've. Went around this rodeo here and if I was the one being abusive and if you suffered the way I know I have suffered well then I completely understand why this has entered my world why this spiritual test is here and I no longer want to play this game I want to be complete with this test I want to be complete with this spiritual imbalance this negative message <clears throat> and then you uh, you ask forgiveness and you offer forgiveness you offer forgiveness for the mistakes they made and you ask forgiveness if you made those same mistakes it's not saying it's okay what they did is it it's very different isn't it it's from a much higher spiritual approach <clears throat> this is acknowledging what is a spiritual test this is acknowledging how do you pass it okay now for many of you you've followed me for a while you know, I've taught these same things in so many different languages, in so many different ways, uh, uh, under different titles of, of subject for this live stream. Um, but 
what is important is each and every day you because you're responsible for your life I am not responsible for your life am I am I responsible no who's responsible for your life you okay so wake up and smell the roses no one's gonna make your life better just kind of wake up and smell those roses you're the only one that's gonna make your life any better and if you have any form of suffering in your life it is a negative message that has entered your world if there's a lot of negative messages in your world you got a lot of work to do <clears throat> the tools that have been given us are beyond 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 extraordinary master Shah has given to us extraordinary tools this is one book this one's called soul over matter I just reached up and grab it and in here is a source field what is the source field the source field I wrote I, I spoke about it in the last live stream the the nutshell version of it is the source field is that which surrounds us at all times and it's trying to help us to clear our blockages and it cannot get to us because we're too closed and we're too stuck in our negative messages and uh, the source field has been brought through human beings by the source through human beings to come to earth to serve us so that we could at least move into a positive energy field as much as possible when we bring a lot more positive energy into our world naturally it's going to remove the negative energy if you have a bottle of cold water and you pour in hot water and keep pouring and keep pouring the water inside the bottle will turn hot this is just it's impossible not to and so when we um, apply a positive source energy field to the environment we're stuck in and we do it consistently then we can have a shift in our spiritual testing okay so this is just one example of a positive source field placed within uh, an inanimate object. You can go to a church, okay, and sit in there. If you're a Jewish, go to a synagogue. If you're Buddhist, go to a temple. Whatever, okay? These are all, in most cases, positive source fields. Certain fields carry a lot more positive Shen Qi Jing than other fields. I from experience know that the source fields of the calligraphies carry a lot more positive frequency than other fields that's why I utilize them <clears throat> same thing when you uh, uh, when you chant for example love peace and harmony now you're adding up a couple things so you you recognize a spiritual test you recognize that you and your soul is carrying that negative message and it's been projected into your life to give you the opportunity to release the blockages <clears throat> and uh, accordingly you apply a couple of things at once you say okay I'm gonna do a deep forgiveness and then you ask all of those that may have been harmed by your negative actions to forgive you uh, with love peace and harmony so then you turn on the music of love peace and harmony this is doing layers of positive energy this is doing layers of positive information to shift the negative information and then maybe you pick up a book and it doesn't have to be this book you can pick up the Bible if you're a Bible person you can pick up the Quran if you're a Quran person you can pick up any text that resonates with your heart and then put it on your heart okay this one resonates with me it has a very positive frequency field and so I may uh, trace the calligraphy on here to resonate and release the negative messages do that five ten minutes if I do it once is it all gone what do you think maybe how long standing is this uh, test been coming to you how long standing has that relationship been bothering you how long standing has that financial issue been bothering you how long standing has that pain in your neck physical shoulder or back been bothering you if it's been with you a while then you need to apply positive frequency and positive information to it for a while Okay. We, you know we live in this fast food world where we expect something now it's, it's ludicrous it's amazing how many people you know uh, they'll say well I tried it and it didn't work it's like really how many times did you harm somebody that brought you this condition over how many lifetimes did you make these mistakes and you do 
20 or 30 minutes of one practice and you think it's going to erase, you know, 30 lifetimes of mistakes, not overly realistic because, you know, we have to change our thinking, open our heart. <clears throat> so the wisdom is available to us. The uh, information, the positive information is available to us. What we do with it is up to us. It is the consistent daily application that makes a difference. Now, I will share with you the fastest way that I am aware of. Maybe you know of a faster way. Uh, and if you do, go do it. But if after you go do it, it still isn't working, especially do it, give it 10 times, you know. But if it still isn't working, then come back and try the way I'm going to recommend because at least in my experience, it's the fastest way. And that is what's called the Tao source field, uh, which translates to Tao Chong. And Tao is, is another word for source. Tao is the beginning, the ending, the all things. It's, uh, some people will say the word God. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's no, no attachments. Don't square your head. It's just the word, okay? But the Tao source field <coughs> is um, a place that uh, carries Tao source calligraphies, which have had transmitted into them heaven's positive, very high-level Shen Qi Jing, very high-level uh, frequencies and information. So basically, if you were a, a person that had been rolled in mud and you stepped underneath a waterfall, it would wash off your mud very fast. If you stepped underneath a little water hose, it would take you quite a while to water it off, right? Well, think of the Dao Chong as a waterfall. Uh, literally, you're stepping into one of the highest positive frequency Shen Qi Jing uh, locations on the planet. And they're in eight different centers around the world. Humanity is um, oblivious of these tools. They're oblivious of this frequency and this, these uh, blessings that are readily and easily available to them. Uh, currently, Master Shah is asking every center worldwide twice a week, twice a week, to offer complimentary blessings within these fields. I mean, I, I don't know what to I don't know how to make it more uh, advantageous to you than to tell you it's free twice a week, right? You, uh, if you are tired of suffering, if you are tired of <clears throat> uh, the negative messages that are that keep getting projected into your world, which create negative experiences pain, suffering of any kind, if you're tired of it truly, then go to uh, any of the centers in person or by webcast. Uh, you can go and register. You go to drshaw.com, go to any of the centers. You have to scroll through a few pages till you find it. But you can register, and you can register for, for, for all the different centers. They're not all doing it on the same day. And you could literally get uh, huge blessings uh, and in essence, each time you go into the Dao Chong, uh, the source field, it's like a, in most cases a half hour or one hour session, you're like standing underneath the waterfall and it literally could erase, you know, a half a lifetime of very unpleasant service just in one hour sitting in the field. That's, that's how powerful these are. You go in that field 100, 200 times, you, your problems could be much, much a lighter if you want to know if a pair of sweet taste it if you want to know if this really works then take advantage of it you cannot beat the honor fee the reason why it's been brought down to the ridiculous cost of free is because people do not appreciate the value and no one's paying for it basically uh, and this is the deepest sadness because it's heaven's love it's heaven's light uh, at some of the highest levels ever condensed in one location and people don't appreciate the value of it and so Master Shah has no choice but to wake up people because if we can wake up people to their spiritual testing if we can assist people with clearing their blockages and they can recognize that it's the Tao source field then humanity will start talking and then the biggest purpose of all of this is to bring everyone back to the light that's the underlying overall purpose the more people return to the light the more humanity uh, as a whole grows mother earth will heal everything will heal but it has to start by people being aware 
of the extraordinary amount of light that sits on Earth at this time in the Dao Chong Dao source fields. So, in conclusion, spiritual testing is a recognition of a negative information that has entered your world. Upon this negative information in your, in your world, you have two choices. Point outside of yourself or point to yourself. If you point to yourself, congratulations, you're on the path to releasing it. Then apply uh, all forms of positive information available to you, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, a, a calligraphy, uh, a, a transmission you've received, the Love, Peace, Harmony song, uh, whatever it is, go to the Dao Chong field, okay? Whatever it is, put yourself in a much, much higher positive frequency environment on a consistent basis, okay? When you put yourself in that environment, always do a forgiveness practice at a very deep level. Always forgive both sides. Offer forgiveness, receive forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, okay? You apply those every time you become aware that this negative thing in front of you uh, returns is, is about you growing, is about you releasing a blockage. You continually apply that on a day-to-day -day basis. Catch yourself in an angry mode, do forgiveness right away. Catch yourself in an auto-reaction mode, do forgiveness right away. You, When you continually... Uh, catch yourself in a spiritual test and disallow yourself from creating additional spiritual debts by creating additional negative information, then you definitely are on the path to happiness and a much healthier, happy life. Okay. So thank you for joining me one hour late. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve you. I hope this wisdom helps you. I hope you apply it. You can acquire um, the calligraphy cards from any center. You can go to drshaw.com. Kristen has already posted it. And uh, go to the representative centers around the world. Uh, and they have schedules. You can just look at their schedule and then register. Register for anything on their site that's complimentary and free. Okay? Uh, and then after you get results, then honor for it. Okay? Uh, what does that mean? That means feel grateful and say thank you. Give a little money back. Okay, so take advantage of um, this rare opportunity that Master Shah's, his, his heart has opened this up for humanity. Don't be um, unaware and, and do nothing about it. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing this with those that can benefit from it. And we'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.